This video is for comedy purposes only, and as such, should not be taken too seriously. These two spend what is likely four to six hours in the cramped car boot and then hop out like they are freshly getting out of bed, when in reality it'd be f***ing cramps and dead legs galore. Unless they are planning on pulling a MacGyver on this garbage they've collected, I don't know what else they're going to use it for. Well, as it turns out, they are indeed pulling a MacGyver and making decent use of all that garbage they collected. So I'll go ahead and remove a sin here. And hey, whilst we're at it, why don't you guys go ahead and follow me at the Honest Gamer over on Twitter and help me get towards 2,500 followers. Or if you're watching this in the year 2025, help me get towards 12.6 million followers, okay? Self-promotion sin. That's a sin on me. Ding. No, I mean a real drink. Is an alcohol. <sighs> no, you don't. Okay, so basically here Beth takes her turn in the long line of people randomly deciding to act like fucking morons on this show. It's now her opportunity to do something that makes us all heavily sigh and roll our eyes into the backs of our heads so far it physically starts to hurt the eyeballs. She's now going off on her own, in the woods, armed with a knife, because she wants a fucking drink of alcohol. Hey, maybe we should stop and think that whilst running for our lives, perhaps it's not the best idea for one of the two people in the group to be drunk. Here I'll give two sins, just because there's going to be more to come, I'm sure. So you want to spend the rest of our lives staring into fire and eating mud snakes? Screw that! We might as well do something! I can take care of myself, and I'm going to get a damn drink. She doesn't once think to actually say to him why this dumbass mission of hers is so important. She just says, I want to do something. I'm going to get a drink. It's very annoying. Golfers like to booze it up, right? I don't think heavy drinking is really associated with golfers. Director of the episode says, Hey, remember that this is The Walking Dead. We need a vehicle on its side right now. Golf buggy? Yeah, that'll do. Tip her over. For some unknown reason, this country club has randomly aged about 60 years since the start of the end of the world. Who's cutting the grass during the apocalypse? <laughs> Slamming the doors super aggressively like that might look good as a cutting point before the break, but it's not really the smart move considering the walkers hadn't gotten into the building and all you've done now is make a loud noise which could attract even more unwanted attention. All for your precious ad break. I know you think this is stupid. And it probably is. No, it most definitely is. This one's for you. Nah, I'm good. Why? Someone's gotta keep watch. So what, you're like my chaperone now? Uh, just drink lots of water. Yes, Mr. Dixon. Someone put me out of my f***ing misery. <sighs> I've never been in jail. I didn't mean anything serious, I just thought, you know, like, the drunk tank. Even my dad got locked up for that. I'm gonna take a piss. Do you have to be 
quiet. Can't hear you, I'm taking a piss. Well, I was wondering when it was going to be his turn around to have a personality change that's really annoying and out of the blue. This particular one is brought to you by Beth asking if he'd ever been to prison before. Due to his irritating actions and putting both of their lives at risk to make some kind of a point, I think it's entirely justified adding five sins. Oh, sounds like our friend out there trying to call over his buddy. You just shut up. Hey, have you never shot a crossbow before? I'm gonna teach you right now. Come on. It's gonna be fun. Do I even need to say anything? I think it has to be yet another five sins once again. I know there's going to be some die-hard Daryl fans who love every single thing he's ever done and every single line he's ever said, but I'm TV Sins and I don't work that way. So feel free to write a comment about his feelings making this all okay. I, I don't know how. Oh, so easy. Come here. Right corner. Basically touches her boob when he's doing this. Kind of wish for my later mental image of him that I hadn't noticed this, and I'm betting it's the same for you now that I've slowed it right down. What the hell you do that for? It was having fun. In fairness, you could still shoot it regardless. I mean, it's not like it's moving so much that it's adding a whole new layer of difficulty to the shooting of it. Your dad? Maybe, maybe I could have done something. This is, for me, genuinely the best acting I've seen him do in all of the seasons so far. I know it's not much that he's saying and doing, but it just feels very real and I like it. So I'll remove a sin here. Lighter than the air Just when that day is coming Who can say? Who can say? Yay! Forest fire. Hi. Hello. You out here? Seems an odd place for a fire hydrant? <laughs> These guys found themselves stuck right in the middle of a 420 party. They're still good people, Daryl. I don't think the good ones survive. The piggyback ride seems kind of pointless now that she's jumped down like 10 seconds later. Pine for summer And we'll buy A beer to shotgun Third attempt to launch a singing career That, that mutt one more chance <clears throat> I think it's really stupid that this happens, considering you can physically see the walkers through the gaps between the wood as he walks up to the door. You'd think he'd be more careful and not just assume in this end of the world kind of situation. Bob! Really? He never noticed that they were so close to him already? Did they decide to keep quiet after spotting him in order to get real close and surprise him? So many questions and so few answers that make sense when the world is crawling with dead people and living depends on you keeping others close to you. I mean, what would they have done if they were doing the whole keep silent thing and then walkers appeared and killed him before they could run to get close? He's thinking, oh yeah, my harem is forming nicely. She didn't have a mean bone in her body. Is that why she isn't here now? Yeah. Yes. Nothing to do with getting bitten by a walker or two. She was playing with me! She wanted a friend! She wanted to kill you! I was gonna lead her away! Ugh. This kid is so damn annoying! I can't. Well, it's becoming a vegan for you then. But then with a the new recent study that found that certain plants can hear themselves being eaten and react, I'm guessing you'll just die of starvation. Or, you know, a crazy sister or something. You think, you think I'm too hard on him? No. I get it. 
This bucket, which is already getting pretty full, has a further three pumps of water added into it. But when Carol picks it up to swap it out with the other one, you can see it's either empty or very close to being empty. <laughs> F and goddamn. Don't worry. She'll come back. I didn't hurt her brain. Here I'm going to remove a sim for just how much this actually shocked me when I first saw it. I know she's a real bitch, but it's decent storyline twists and I always love stuff like that. She has a shoebox full of mice. I asked her if she was the one feeding the walkers at the prison. That was her. What I want to know is where the hell was she finding all these mice? Also, mice are slippery little things, so how on earth did she manage to catch all of them without anyone else even knowing that she was doing it? It's a part of you now. Me too. But I forgive you. This scene is definitely worth another sin removal, because both of them do a fantastic job of portraying the feelings of guilt and anger and then forgiveness. Hey, 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 watch out! Go! 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 No! 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 Was it not incredibly obvious where this walker was going to land? All they had to do is collectively step back, but as always, a shout of warning isn't enough to keep these guys paying attention to what's being said, and so she got pushed over as a result, like a number T. Are you okay? I'm fine. Clearly. When Brian told us he wanted to take over the prison, I knew it sounded bad. Maybe you should be being quiet since you're walking towards the sounds of a lot of walkers inside of a dark tunnel. Oh, hey, well, what are you doing? Sorry. This is the only picture I have of you. You don't need a picture of me. You never will again. I understand the concept behind her line of thought. I do. But it's still really, really stupid. The key idea behind keeping pictures of your loved ones is because you never know when you're going to be without said loved ones in the future. Even if you're lucky and survive to be old in the world of the walkers, you're still going to die of old age and it'd be nice to have a picture of the people you cared about to remember them by. So yeah. This is dumb as hell. We gonna tell him? Tell him what? Everything that's happened to us. All the stuff we've done. How are you any different from anyone else? The point is that everyone just got on after the world ended and did their best to survive. I'm not sure why he'd be thinking into it any more than that. Right into the trap. Carl. Carl, stop! Carl! Of course, Carl is now back into douche mode and forgets everything he knows and just blindly runs to the sound of a guy shouting help and ignoring his father again. Like a douche. Oh, come here, boy. You leave him back! I mean, I know the world's ended, but the law of nature definitely is still in place. And the rule of nature strictly dictates that guys who like little children and normal guys do not get along. That's just the way it is. So the fact that they're allowing this fat little creeper to do this and not cringing so hard they knot up into a fucking pretzel-like shape is just unrealistic. Then we'll have the girl. Then the boy. And of course, this group of survivors is apparently made up of only rapists and child molesters. <laughs> okay, so two sins here. Firstly, Rick gets a good surprise attack, but then fails to follow up in any way for a good few seconds, meaning he's insanely lucky that he didn't get shot right there and then. The second sin is that after getting up and punching the guy, he just straight up stands there. Hey, what you did last night. Anybody would have done that. No, not that. 
I don't know about you guys, but if I was in the same position, I would absolutely do everything literally possible to keep my son safe from harm. For Rick doing what he did, proving he'd do anything for Carl, I'll remove a sin. Jesus, Carl, take your time, would you? We'd had a bit of a mix that... SWAT! <sighs> Gets into your bloodstream quicker. Reach the wizard. Reach the wizard.